U.S. Embassy bombings in Kenya and Tanzania marked a turning point in international terrorism. Among the blood and the bodies was a new emerging threat. This was the moment Al-Qaeda grabbed global headlines. In many ways, it was a precursor to the deadly September the 11th, 2001 Al-Qaeda attacks on US-based targets that it would carry out three years later. 1998 was a big thing. Bridget Nakos, who's written several books on terrorism, feels the embassy bombings helped bring Al-Qaeda much wider recognition. That was the first really big catastrophic Al-Qaeda uh, planned and carried out attack. So here you have a person who was pretty much involved in getting Al-Qaeda started on the road to catastrophic terrorist acts. 52-year-old Saudi national Khalid Al-Fawaz has pleaded not guilty to conspiracy charges. Al-Fawaz, the alleged London-based spokesman for Al-Qaeda during the 1990s, was arrested in the UK in 1998. He then spent 14 years there in jail before being extradited to the US in 2012. And part of that agreement was that he would not be sent to the US detention facility of Guantanamo, but rather would stand trial in a US civilian court. Daphne Eviatar has visited Guantanamo many times and witnessed the slow-moving proceedings of terrorism trials there. It makes much more sense to have them here in the civilian courts than to send them to a military tribunal. It's just night and day. It's kind of like watching a circus when you watch those military commission proceedings. And not because people aren't trying to do a good job, they are, but the limitations of the system just make it impossible. In all, three men were expected to face trial here in Manhattan. But earlier this month, co-defendant Abu Anas al-Libi died while in U.S. custody in a New York hospital. And in September, Adel Abdul Bari pleaded guilty. He now faces up to 25 years in prison. Six others are already serving life sentences for their involvement, and several suspects remain at large. As for Al Fawaz, his trial is expected to last about a month, and if convicted, he too faces up to life in prison. Nick Harper, CCTV, New York.